Good day, YouTubers. Time for a spot of royalty. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. Find the book worldwide on Amazon and Kindle and paperback versions. Find the full color card deck used here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Uh, Thomas Markle. Uh, is is Megan is Megan's PR team again smearing Thomas Markle? Okay, she's looking. This picture is interesting. She's got a bit of a smear. Her lip is up slightly. Her eyebrows are raised slightly. That's there's a little bit of contempt showing on her face. This is a mashup. He's just looking very concerned, very unhappy. His mouth is downturned a bit. Poor Thomas. He is beleaguered. Let's let's read a little bit. Thomas Markle speaks out on the birth of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's baby boy. We know he's his name is Archie and he's a boy. Thomas Markle, who rarely misses an opportunity to talk about his daughter Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, issued a statement about his new grandson on Monday, shortly after the palace announced the happy news of the child's birth. Quote, I'm delighted to hear that mother and child are doing well, Markle, a former lighting director, st said in a statement shared with the Daily Mail. I'm sure the Daily Mail called him. Quote, I am proud that my new grandson is born into the British royal family, and I am sure that he will grow up to serve the crown and the people of Britain with grace, dignity, and honor. Quote, God bless the child, and I wish him health and happiness. The 74-year-old added, My congratulations to my lovely daughter, Duchess Meghan, and Prince Harry, and God save the Queen. Um, those are very nice comments. I'm sure that the Daily Mail called him. And just look at how twisted the reporting is. The medium is the message. This man literally can't do anything right. Thomas Markle, who rarely misses an opportunity to talk about his daughter, issued a statement. They, I know they called him. And what's he, what's, what is this poor man to do? Is he supposed to go get some chicken McNuggets and wear you know, a disguise and say things like, get away from me and no comment? I mean, what would they do with that? Okay, here's another one. Uh, Joc Rosalind, Thomas's ex-wife, who he married in 1964, she's now speaking out against Thomas. Here's what she says. Don't let Thomas Markle into Archie's life, says Jocelyn. She accuses Thomas of being an awful father and claims he cheated on her and was prone to foul mouth outbursts and cannot be trusted. God save the queen, says Thomas Markle. Uh, let's see. Rosalind Markle of Albuquerque, New Mexico, married Thomas Markle in 1964. Claims in 11 years of marriage he cheated repeatedly, including with her relative. Ew. Comes as she revealed... He never met two older grandchildren aged 34 and 32. That's actually concerning because those two grandchildren that she alleges he never met are Samantha's children. So Samantha's a big supporter of Thomas, and I find that very strange. Okay, let's see. She accused him of cheating on her multiple times and treating her extremely poorly and shouting verbal abuse at her, reports the Mirror. Miss Markle claims that Thomas was an awful father who spent days at a time away from the family home while sleeping with other women. He's an award-winning lighting designer. And unless he's working on a TV show like Married with Children, where Megan was minded every day after school during her teen years, he has to go to Chicago for six weeks or go to Atlanta, which they're now boycotting because those terrible people in Atlanta... They don't want to kill their children, and they passed a law that you can't kill your children after six weeks. The immorality, the absolute immorality of those people to, to, to pass, oh, oh, just unbelievable. Remember, they hold the higher ground. They kill their children. Okay. 
So he would have had to travel for his work. Is she just like, I don't know. She claims that while he was never violent, he would go on foul mouth tirades. Mrs. Markle added he would scream, F you, F off, leave me the F alone, or get the F out of here. Everything was F. He called me an F and C a lot. <laughs> Everything is a crime. You can't even have a relationship with your own wife. Uh, and I don't, who knows if he actually did that. We're going to explore this. We're going to explore the character of Mr. Thomas Markle, because is there any rational reason why Megan won't see her own father, who essentially raised her? The Duchess, 37, has reportedly not spoken to her father since before her wedding. She, Megan told the Mirror, repeatedly, he is shown to Megan he cannot be trusted. She must know, okay, this is the ex-wife. She must know that now. I speak not out of bitterness. My life moved on many years ago, but out of concern. Archie deserves to be brought up in a happy home, not in this vengeful situation that has been created. Thomas was an awful father. What makes him think he'd be a great, uh, great grandfather, Archie? She claims that at one point he abandoned the family with his parents to go live a single life in Chicago. When he returned for them, after his parents asked him to, they reportedly moved in back together, but nothing changed. That uh, may very well likely be that he had work in Chicago. He has to feed his family. Okay, and so he would have had to go away for three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. That is how the work is. Okay, so this kind of answers the question, uh, you know, is Megan going to invite Thomas, you know, now that the baby is born, does he, you know, is there an entree? Because this is the perfect PR move. In this storm of bad PR for Megan and Harry, this is the right PR move. Just simply invite the father. Grin, grit your teeth and bear it. Grin and bear it. Uh, you know, smile for the camera. This is the right move. Okay, so she, we're going to look at this. Let's look at Megan and Thomas now. Let's just look at what's going on between them. Let's get a feel for the energies between them. Because I was also just watching Thomas's interviews with uh, Piers Morgan and the Britain Today. Uh, and he was so kind, so almost groveling. He was just so generous and he forgave everything and everything made sense and he wasn't upset about anything I mean he was just wow he was so forgiving okay and the man literally never says the wrong thing and he just can't do anything right at this point he can't do anything right and this is the media makes the news the more I do this kind of work, the more I see that the media is actually making the news. Uh, as much as reporting the news, they're making the news. I find that very interesting because that's not what we think is happening. They always talk about being objective and telling both sides. That's really not what's happening anymore. Okay, so what's going on here in Thomas's side? Jacks tend to be children. They can be children, but there's two Jacks. Player is for the public. Butterfly is very public. Strength, very rooted, enduring, enduring uh, what's happening in the public and his public image. 22, six diamonds in front of all the people. He's just enduring. And he's hoping for a transformation of this situation. He's just enduring all the bad press. And it's just terrible. And I would encourage you to listen to the, to go back and listen to, and they're, they're very highly watched, 300,000, 400,000 views, of Thomas giving interviews to Piers Morgan and this other lady, this other British commentator host. And I'm not that familiar with her because she's not famous in America, whereas Piers Morgan has managed to parlay uh, into fame in America somehow. Okay, what's going on on Megan's side? Man, that's got to be him. Secrets about the man, very important secrets about the man. 29, eight hearts, water into wine. Eights are everything, can also be deception. 
deceiving and secrets, deception and secrets, key deception and secrets about the man. She's keeping secrets. Okay, Megan doesn't want to see uh, Thomas, her father, because she's keeping secrets. She wants to shut the door. She's, she's really literally shut the door on her entire family and said, you're not part of my life. Okay, and that's what she's doing to Thomas. She's just trying to keep the secrets in a box. And interestingly, this has worked for Megan her whole life. Okay, all the way up until she uh, got a ring from, Mar from Harry and entered the royal family, this worked. Why? Because the whole world wasn't watching. There were just people supporting Megan. We love Megan, and she had a lot of supporters, and there wasn't enough scrutiny of her life and her doings and her sayings to to uncover these things, okay? She wasn't public enough. Now, she can't hide anything. Um, she literally can't hide anything. Here on the bottom, we have 16, which is four spades, coffin, ending, and secrets. This is the worst ending to this law, this karmic relationship. It's just a really bad ending, and we have 10 spades and four spades, ending and death, just ending. So, Megan is just trying to keep the secrets. He's showing as a good man on her side. She's trying to keep the secrets. Uh, he's just enduring this terrible onslaught. He's just really gritting his teeth. I think maybe he feels like he can't go away. The, he can't win. If he goes away, they're just going to keep defaming him. If he sticks around, they're going to keep defaming him. And so he's just enduring his public image, his constant, constantly being smeared publicly. Okay. Let's look at Thomas and Rosalind, the ex-wife. Okay, and after Thomas left and divorced Rosalind, he married her in 1964. He married a lady called... Um, Doria Ragland. And from that marriage came Megan. Okay, so that's interesting because um, Rosalind is a very different person. She looks very different. She acts very different. Uh, and people tend to uh, have patterns of dating. Okay, I've dated a lot of Asian girls with, with master's degrees. I just find them very beautiful and I'm very attracted to them. And there's a whole series of lovely, black-haired Asian girls with master's degrees that I like to go out with. Uh, Thomas did the opposite. He went from Rosalind, who is very different in every way from Doria Raglan, to Doria Raglan, like, completely the opposite. Uh, you know, a granola-crunching, hippie kind of woman... Uh, who allegedly may have just done the dip and disappeared and left left him to raise Megan for several years or may have even gone to prison or went down to Mexico. And she's a yoga teacher and she's a social... Uh, uh, she's a yoga teacher and a so, uh, social worker kind of person. Just the exact opposite. Okay, and I think that that's where Megan gets all her so social injustice warrior stuff from, is from her mother, Doya Raglan. Okay, so he really made a switch after Rosalind, and that's very interesting. That says a lot about his psychology. He just didn't feel that that thing with Rosalind was working out. So let's look at Rosalind and Thomas. Was Thomas unfaithful? What, what was going on there? And maybe Rosalind was unfaithful because they never want to talk about their own unfaithfulness. Okay, that's interesting. Rosalind, Thomas, looking for unfaithfulness. I'm specifically asking because she said he went away and specifically he went to Chicago, which easily could be work because this man is in the movie business. Okay, so was Thomas unfaithful? You know, was he unfaithful? Uh, Star Bethlehem Mustard Seed Handcuffs. Handcuffs is a union. It's commitment and union. Committed to the direction with her and Mustard Seed is a seed. Three and, and seven, ten. Three diamonds, Trinity. 
everybody working together, committed to working everything together with Rosalind, good direction, and messages. Uh, he didn't do it. He's an innocent man. Okay, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. Okay, so 40 years later, you can't stand up and accuse a with no evidence and nobody remembers and they're like, I wasn't even at that party, you know? You can't do, that's, it, there's no evidence of any uh, sexual indiscretions here, okay? That's not what's showing on his side. Okay, what's going on here? 11 and 12, 23, six clubs, olive tree. She was the foundation of the family, reacting to circumstances and the mother reacting to circumstances and very and rooting the family. She was the anchor of the family, staying at home with the children. And uh, this is all good. This poor man, I actually am feeling really sorry for him. He really just gets a bad rap. He's been getting a bad rap his whole life. And she's making these horrible accusations against him. And uh, it's just terrible. I feel really bad. He's just lived his whole life getting these terrible false accusations. She's making terrible false accusations against him, uh, his ex-wife, and he married her in 1964. Do you realize how long ago that is? My goodness. That's a really long time ago. Now, they were married for a bunch of years, but they married in 1964. I think they were married nine years. Okay, so did Megan's PR team pay her, pay Rosalind to do this? Okay, is Megan behind this? Megan and her PR team, you know, found, they hunted, they went, they scoured the earth and they found Rosalind. They're like, oh, he was married before Doria and Doria would know this. And they're like, here's some money. Say some nasty things about Thomas at exactly the right time. And... Because I'm not inviting him to the palace because I want to keep these secrets. Did they pay Rosalind? Oh, I need to write my questions down. Okay. Megan and Thomas. Rosalind. Thomas. Okay, so did they pay Rosalind? Four spades is keeping it in the box secrets, or could be, no. Mercury, deceptive talking, money. Did they pay Rosalind? Here's the money card. Cornucopia, deceptive talking, and keeping it secret. 17 and 4, 21, 6 hearts, the karmic relationship. Keep Because of the karmic relationship and the baby... Here's some money to lie about Thomas, and as long as you keep it a secret, you get the money. So yeah, Megan and her PR team paid Rosalind. Here's the money card. Cornucopia, when I made this card, I almost put dollar, dollar, dollar bills all over it, because this is the money card. But instead, I called it Cornucopia, because more broadly, Cornucopia represents, it does represent specifically money, but it represents every good material thing, everything money can buy. So this is the abundance of everything. Okay, so the cornucopia is everything money can buy, but it's specifically money, because how do you get it? We use money to buy stuff. So they gave her money to lie about Thomas, and she just went all the way. There's another very disturbing accusation. She uh, said that Thomas has never met Samantha's children, who are 32 and 34. And one is named Chris. One is a boy, one is a girl. That is a little disturbing to me, because Samantha is a huge defender of Thomas. Has Thomas ever met Samantha's children? Has Thomas ever met Samantha's children? Oh, 
Oh dear. Oh dear. Interesting. Okay, so Samantha's children. These are his children. Uh, so Samantha is the stepsister of Megan. So Samantha is the daughter of Rosalind. Okay, and those are his grandchildren. Okay, Samantha is Thomas Markle's daughter. Thomas is Thomas Markle's son. Samantha is, these are his grandchildren. So has he ever met, has Thomas never met his, Samantha, his own grandchildren? Roadblock, finger of God, devil, roses... 18 and 5. It's 23, 6 clubs, olive tree. Finger of God reaches down and changes everything. Roses. Now he went through a bankruptcy. Okay, he went through a bankruptcy. He's very old now. He's like 74. He had a heart attack. He lives in Mexico. As someone who had a bankruptcy, he wouldn't be able to travel over there. Blocked and devil. Devil is a liar. Devil wants to hurt you. Did he ever see Finger of God roses? I'm going to say he didn't. I'm going to say he didn't because that's blocked. And devil... Devil is selfish, blocked and selfish and things. Finger of God reaches down and he said the right words. Uh, Thomas is not, maybe is not an angel. He's a bit of a devil. He's a little bit selfish. Uh, and despite all the virtue signaling, that's kind of how you go bankrupt generally is just foolishness and selfishness and you know acting like a devil drinking and drugging and not you know looking not acting like the ant uh and not planning for the future and it does look like the finger of god reached down and changed everything i think he just uh he was probably it looks like he was depressed and the circumstances of life just reached down and just smashed him and he just took a while to recover because of really stupid, bad decisions that he was making. So I actually think that this is actually true. He was not sexually unfaithful to her, to his wife, but he was selfish and he hasn't met Samantha, his own grandchildren born by Samantha, who's a great supporter of him. Um, okay, let's, let's review What's going on here? Because there's a lot going on here. Megan and Thomas. She's just trying to keep the secrets. He's a good man. Okay, he's showing as a good man. And this is a key relationship with the good man and very, very important secrets. He has very important secrets. But all he says is good things. He's practically begging. He never says a negative word about Megan or the royal family or anything. So I think her secrets are safe unless she keeps treating him like this. Um, so eight, eight hearts. She is afraid that he's going to screw everything up for her. And she's afraid that the whole family, Samantha, Thomas, everybody except Doria is going to screw everything up for her. And probably she only invited Doria because they don't seem to have a good, close emotional relationship. Probably she only invited Doria into her life for the camera. That's what I see in the other readings. So she felt that she needed to have someone in the family there. And this was the right virtue signal. Uh, Thomas, he's just enduring all the bad press. And this is a terrible ending to their... This is just the worst ending. Okay, and he's just going to endure, endure it. And he really has no way out. Uh, if he doesn't speak up 
at the because the media is going to call him if he doesn't speak up and make statements he's going to be slammed in the he's slammed in the press no matter what he does and it's probably worse if he goes away and he's act this keeps coming out of his mouth he's like i have to defend myself okay thomas and roslyn was there any infidelity between them she's the anchor of the family and no he was just working Okay, he was committed to the family. He was committed to this direction. Um, does Rosalind have some mental issues? Because he was not unfaithful, and she kept accusing, accusing, accusing him of unfaithfulness. And this is the man's job. Okay, he has to go work. And that's the work. That's how the work is. You go to Atlanta. You go to uh, Canada, uh, Vancouver. You go to... You travel. You travel for the work, and it's it's peace work. Okay, is she have some mental issues? Cross, crossroads, woman. Uh, cross burdens, woman. Crossroads decisions, twelve, and twelve, six spades. She's just bitter about the divorce. Okay, they divorce. Okay, Jesus was born. Uh, and they married right after that, and then they divorced, and she's still bitter about it. She's just still bitter about it. She's still bitter about it. She's never going to uh, let this go, that he had the audacity to leave her and marry someone else. She's bitter about it. Okay, did, did they pay Rosalind? Yeah, they paid her to lie, to keep the secrets. They paid her to lie. As long as she doesn't tell... They paid her to lie. This is literally money for lying about, you know, about Thomas because of the baby. Okay, uh, did Thomas ever, he never, he never met his grandchildren, Samantha's children, because he was just in a lot of trouble. The worries of life just came and just really messed him up and rocked his boat and beat him up real bad. Uh, and so that's actually true. He was not unfaithful. He has not met uh, his grandchildren on, from Samantha. He's met other grandchildren. Uh, she just wants to keep the secrets, and he feels like he has no choice but to endure this. And Rosalind, his ex-wife, the mother of Samantha and Thomas Jr., is still bitter. But she's not crazy. She's just bitter. She's just bitter. She's bitter. She's never going to let it go. Cross. It's forever, man. She's never going to let it go. There is no divorce. There's only a piece of paper saying you're divorced. Uh, that's your royalty today. That's how I see it. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling, The Magi Method. Find the book worldwide on Amazon and Kindle and paperback versions. Find the full color card deck used here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment.